You can't touch this. You can't touch this. Welcome back to another episode of Nailing Flicks. Uh, this is our continuation of our child stars to child to adult stars. Um, I just want to highlight too that the Vine actually website did a um, did a child, you know, stars to adult stars little feature out of late. And we, while we love the Vine, we want to highlight that we did it first. We were there. We were there first. Um, so this week we'll be looking at the films. Uh, I'll be looking at Leonardo DiCaprio's offering Inception. I'll be looking at Christian Bale's The Fighter. And I'll be looking at Black Swan with Natalie Portman. So yeah, let's get into it. So what's our first film? The Fighter. The Fighter. <laughs> So you're a beaver, and you're a red bear. Red beard. She's red dog, and that's beaver. You're red dog. You're beaver. Yeah, don't use those names. It's just for family. Be nice. Don't use the nicknames. The Fighter tells the true story of the rise of boxer Irish Mickey Ward amongst his family and the city of Lowell, Massachusetts. Mickey. Mark Wahlberg trains and fights some low-level matches under the training of his half-brother Dickie Eklund, Christian Bale, another pugilist that still trades on the memory of a famous fight against the legend Sugar Ray Robinson. Even though he didn't win the fight, he takes credit for knocking down the champ and in turn is known as the Pride of Lowell. Unfortunately, Dickie is now addicted to crack and even though he talks endlessly of a comeback, his addiction gradually undermines Mickey's training. But some outside sources see the potential of Mickey and make him a very reasonable offer under the condition that neither Dickie or his controlling and manipulative mother slash manager Alice Melissa Leo are involved in any way. Mickey's new girlfriend Charlene, Amy Adams, eventually nudges Mickey away from his family to work with a new training team and wins some small but hard fought victories. When Dickie finishes a stint in prison, he wants back in on Mickey's training, seeing how far his brother has come under different tutelage. Of course, Alice also has her own ideas of getting back on Mickey's team. Director David O. Russell plays the long game with the fighter, keeping the action mostly away from the ring and more in the realm of Lowell and especially the Ward family. Much like his 1999 film Three Kings, also with Wahlberg, Russell shows restraint with the story and lets the audience make up their own minds, giving extra weight to the powerfully emotional finale that pays off in spades. Performances are uniformly great down the line, with special mentions to all the Ward sisters and Jack McGee as Father George Ward, and Mickey O'Keefe as Mickey's mentor in the film and in real life. But even though Christian Bale is scooping a bunch of awards for his fantastic performance, he is matched by Mark Wahlberg, Melissa Leo and Amy Adams a definite highlight in the careers of all involved. Over to you all. Yeah, I look, I, I agree. I thought, you know, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I, I, did, I still do think Christian Bale sh kind of shits all over. Marky Mark. Mark. Oh, my Marky Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, that's going to happen anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, if he doesn't, you know, I mean, anyone who kind of said he didn't deserve that golden globe, mm -hmm. I think needs to eat their hat, mm, you know, because yeah. he's, he's brilliant. And even Amy Adams, I watched her, and I was I just thought, great, because she's done these, you know, like, um, Miss Pettigrew for a day, those kind of like, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Nuts, okay, because it's <laughs> Sunday. Like, um, you know, there's really kind of ditzy little pretty characters, and yeah, June sure. Bug, and then you put her in something like this, and she's really kind of gutsy and grotesque and yeah. I love rough. It. Yeah, rough she's really the rough, but she's still like, you know, woo <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. She's and, a bit of a sex pot as well. Oh yeah, I just it was it was so watchable. And it was you know what the only thing for me was though I was likening it, you know, I mean those those boxing films with obviously the boxing matches. Yeah. There was something there was a there were a couple of particular fights you know, at the beginning when they were fighting, when he was fighting, um, and losing, and losing, yeah, I was going, whoa, oh, like, and I was, because I, <laughs> I, it was like really, there was a lot of impact in it, and then later on with the fight scenes, um, there was one which was really mediocre, like for me when really? I was watching it, okay. yeah, I kind of went, oh, like it was just this fight, it was kind of like. <laughs> yeah. Does that make sense? It was like a filming. It's like it didn't just one particular fight for me. I kind of went, oh. But then the last yeah. fight was, you know, 
kick ass. Yeah, yeah. No, well, so I didn't see any real trouble with any of the but I mean, I mean, boxing movies aren't about boxing at all. No, <laughs> I mean they never are. But there's, you know, I mean, like you know, I was likening it to the sort of matches in Rocky. Yeah, the initial Rocky. Let's yeah. <laughs> so just not even mention them again. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's a sort of a standard there, I think, yeah. which is set, which I. Yeah, but that aside, it was about the story for me, and that was. I thought it was brilliant. Okay. I did. I, I did think it was brilliant. That was my. That's such a like a pissy quibble. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fabs. Um, yeah, I actually didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would. I think um, as I was watching it, though, I'm sure this is one of those films that I'm going to go back to and enjoy more the second it's time. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, having said that, I don't know, I think perhaps my expectations got in the way a little bit, but I found, I did find it a little bit kind of slow moving, a little bit sort of um, uneventful in a way. Well, that's, this is what I was talking about, like Three Kings, because he, he tends, like David O. Russell, mm -hmm. he tends to keep, he tends to keep it very cerebral. Yeah. And then switches at the end to make it very emotional, and, you know, like, you know, go from the head to the heart. Yeah, well, I mean, that... One thing that I did kind of wonder a little bit was that, I mean, um, Mark Wahlberg's character is known for sort of starting off slowly and finishing strongly. That's and right. I kind of wondered to myself, just maybe is he doing that? M mirroring thing? Yeah, that character. Film, because that's what, yeah, that's what yeah. it was doing for me as well. I was like, yeah. mm, I don't know. And then like the end, it's just like fantastic. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, um, yeah. And... Also, Christian Bale, you know, I just have to agree with you. He is he's great. You know, yeah. He's so good. Um, and seeing him, you know, shed pounds yet again for another <laughs> movie role. Like, after he said he wouldn't do it after... Um, the Machinist. Uh, no, there was the other one after that. Uh, uh, Dawn, Rescue Dawn. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. With Werner Herzog. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um... But yeah. He's so method, you know. I mean, mm. I know, you know, all that kind of stuff that went on with Christian Bale. Every actor, I mean, you kind of would if you're affiliated with the production, but every actor stood up and said he's just, it's just the height of professionalism working with him, mm. and he is so method. I mean, Turn you know, they're not withstanding. Yeah, well, I mean, like that's the thing. Okay, <laughs> okay no, what I was going to say was, you know, they would say he would disappear for like um, hours on end, like Dicky, okay. like he would just bugger off yeah. and do his own thing. He was so kind. And if you, if you know, if you're method, if you're if you're in um, as an actor, like in a heightened emotional state, yeah. ripping something out in a scene, you know, trying to. I mean, they're paying actors millions and millions sure. of dollars to give before these performances. Yeah. So I mean, like any actor, would, that would be stressful to try and deliver a performance worthy of that yeah. and to have someone like i'm not just i think the way he handled it was really obviously very bad but to have someone sort of faffing around in the background hooking lights and stuff I, I think that that you know that kind of raw emotion was probably dribbled off from what whatever scene he was just doing, then yeah. doing and just like went into real life you yeah. know i've seen it before with other actors okay. and like afterwards i just kind of go because they're in this heightened emotional state and i mean it's not dismissing it but i think there's a lot of sh shit piled on him for that and i kind of went oh yeah i mean I, when i was exactly i was yeah. saying experience i was like yeah well i mean that happens yeah <laughs> it, it does if you're having a bad day and you know you're afterwards you're so embarrassed about it we're all human yeah exactly and it's not like if we all have a bad day at, at you know at our whatever respective jobs are it's not like we've got microphones on us all the time well absolutely yeah, yeah I, reckon, I reckon um david o russell you know probably after i heart huckabees yeah <laughs> like Tom Lund, it was probably came into this gym he was like shit christian bale it was like uh, they they had Christian Bale, who's you know been off off the back of this Terminator uh, tirade, and then um, you know David O. Russell, who's on you know on YouTube getting millions of hits yeah. for, for getting into Lily Tomlin. <laughs> and I, I could be said you got Marky Mark, who's a Hellraiser from years gone by. I mean, it was Absolutely. like the gunpowder was stacked, <laughs> you know. But, but apparently, apparently, it was a great set to be on. Apparently, it was fine. Mm -hmm. Looked like clock, clockwork, and and it kind of shows because I mean everyone's just fantastic. Everyone's in the zone. Mm. Oh, and the okay, like she, I'm, um, I'm um, the lady who played. Um, the mother. Melissa Lee. Oh, yeah. she was just revolting. <laughs> yeah. She was amazing. Like the family, I felt I actually felt dirty watching the family. Right. Like yeah. they were just like these like kind of sucker fish swimming in the, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just, I feel like what it, yeah. That was, I think, for me, that was also one thing that maybe took me out of it just a little bit. You know, in terms of just going, well, how, you know, to Warburg, it's like how stupid do you have to be to put up with these absolute, you know, leeching assholes. Mm. Like, seriously. I, yeah, I, I maybe family. thought that a little bit too much. The sisters, you know, just this collective mob of... Yeah, they were. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was, yeah. 
But it's, you know, like, I mean, if you're, when you're a part of a family, you think about the, the shit that we do put up with yeah. in a family, for, mm. for, for a family's love. I don't think it's unfeasible that someone would actually put up with all that. When your physical well-being is on the line, though, in terms of just getting the crap pummeled out of you, you yeah, know, for the people, sake of money. But people are different. Like, I can't, you know, like, I can't, I can't watch it and dismiss that someone would actually stay there and go through that. Yeah, I guess, but I just... Yeah, his character didn't strike me as being, you know, that kind of subservient that he would stay in that okay, spot. Okay, fair so, enough. That's yeah. Valid. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Well, I mean, it's a real story, and I did a bit of uh, further research after seeing the film because I was mm. intrigued. And there's a lot of uh, there's a few Dicky Eklund fights. There's a Sugar Ray one on YouTube. Um, there's uh, a lot of Irish Mickey Ward um, uh, fights, and also the the documentary. Mm -hmm. That's in the in the film. Yeah. In the photo. That that's high on Crack Street. That's actually out there online as well. You can watch that online. And um Richard Farrell, who was one of the cameramen on the original doco, was in the film as well. Oh right. Yeah, he yeah, was yeah. he was a you know Keeping it real. Peace love out. He was <laughs> like <laughs> back in the crack. <laughs> All right, let's hammer it then. Um, oh, just quickly, I'm, I'm tipping uh, Christian Bale for the uh, Oscar. Yeah, the, look, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go there too and say that as well. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's actually turned into a little bit of a mini Oscar show. This one, <laughs> the films we're reviewing. So let's hammer it. Uh, I really, really liked it. Uh, one of the one of the best films I've seen in the last year or so. So eight out of ten for me. Yeah, I'm gonna give it an eight as well. Uh, seven for me. <laughs> Stay here. Yeah. Listen to me. Stay right here. I gotta go. Get I just want you to throw it off. Me, are you fucking 